Welcome to our final video of chapter one. This video is going to be all about ethics and accounting. So this is such an important topic. And the reason it's such an important topic is because everything in accounting rests on trust. In fact, I believe the financial markets of our world and our world's economy would crumble if people stopped trusting accountants. It's that important. So it's important for us accountants to be trustworthy and you'll see it hammered into you. If you go forward in accounting, you will see ethical behavior hammered into you as fundamental to our job and for good reason. Uh, if people stop trusting accounts, and this is more on the financial accounting side, it's also important in management accounting too, uh, but on the financial accounting side, if people stop trusting accounts, uh, that means investors and bankers won't want to uh, invest in companies or lend companies money. If that's the case, our capital markets, that's what we call lending and investing, will freeze up. And if companies can't get money from investors or lenders because nobody trusts their accounting information, it's bad for the economy and bad for the world. And we've seen things like this happen, not because of necessarily because of accountants, but when, uh, for example, in 2008 with the economic crisis, banks were less apt to lend money, investors didn't want to invest money, and it had terrible, terrible implications for the worldwide economy. Um, so when people, when accountants betray trust, and if you Google unethical accountant or accountant betraying trust, you'll get no shortage of hits on, on the topic. You'll get news today, I guarantee you, within the last seven days, you can find news of an accountant behaving badly. Now, why is that important and why is that news? And I'm happy it's news. If it wasn't news, it would mean it was so commonplace that it, was, uh, it wasn't newsworthy. Uh, the reason there's that, that news is because accounts have this duty of care. We have an obligation to financial information users to behave ethically. Now, what does ethical mean in the context of accounting? Well, it's pretty broad, uh, the definition here. I'm just gonna scroll down and get some new uh, paper here. Um, I would say there's really four components. There's probably a lot more components. I'm gonna list four, but you can imagine about a million others. So the first thing, the first obligation that an, an accountant has is to be competent they need to know what the heck they're doing. If you're put in a position to make decisions for a company, financial decisions for a company, or if you're in a position where you're providing financial information about a company to outsiders, you must be competent to do so. That means uh, most often when we think about accounting and competence, it usually means a professional accounting designation. Uh, at least in my mind, that's what it means. Um, so in Canada, we have CPA. I think in the States, it's a CPA as well. I think they're chartered accountants in, in uh, England, and there might be other CMA and uh, other types of designations. But a professional accounting designation is a signal of competence. But how do you do accounting when you don't have one of these professional designations? Well, most often, you'll work in a company where somebody with a professional designation is supervising you. And uh, you will gain competence through experience and through supervision and review. And uh, believe me, when you get through an accounting degree at university, you're only beginning your career and your road to an accounting designation. And it's a long, hard road, uh, that's for sure. So competence means uh, maintaining your skill uh, by doing professional development, uh, following laws, and just having a good understanding of accounting rules. Uh, the second cornerstone to accounting ethics is confidentiality. And I think that makes good sense when I just say the word confidentiality. Of course, whatever an accountant does with an accountants doing work for either their own company or some outside company, uh, they must keep things confidential. Uh, they must not betray their clients' uh, confidence. Uh, the only time that they're sort of a, a they're allowed to break that rule is if the courts require it so uh, a doctor I don't think I could be wrong I don't think a doctor uh, can be compelled to, to tell talk in court about somebody's personal medical records 
uh, without their consent. I, I don't think so. I know for a fact, and I should have used this as an example, lawyers can't be called to testify against their own client. So if I, you know, if I say, yes, I, I stole that hamburger and I'm going to court and I tell my lawyer I stole the hamburger, the lawyer still got to defend me and they can't testify against me. They can't use my own words against me. Uh, they absolutely have confidentiality. Accountants have to follow confidentiality, but if they get called into court, they do have to tell uh, the courts. Uh, the trick would be staying out of court. Um, integrity. And when I think about integrity, I think avoiding confidential uh, confidence. Ugh, excuse me, conflicts of interest. Uh, so. You know, if I'm uh, doing an audit of somebody, it's not somebody that I hold stock in or, you know, those types of situations. And we don't even want to be perceived as having a conflict of interest. We want to really appear independent. And if we're perceived as not being independent, that's just about as bad. So maintaining one's independence when you're doing accounting, being uh, critical uh, as you evaluate financial data is really important. Um, uh, the, the second type of item re related to integrity is you generally, as an accountant, aren't allowed to talk smack about other accountants. You know, you can say, we do good things. You're not even allowed to say, hey, we're the best accounting firm in town. No, nope, that's illegal, at least in Canadian accounting rules. I, I don't want to speak for worldwide, uh, but that's sort of thought of as being negative towards the profession. Uh, you can't say something negative about other, other firms. Um, fourth, credibility, and that just comes with, you know, fairness and objectivity with the way we communicate information. We want to be credible sources of information. So those are uh, sort of broad guidelines for behaving with ethics. When I think about the question of ethics, and gosh, there's courses on this, and I'm no, by no means an expert, uh, I often apply a pretty simple test to whether I'm you know, behaving ethically or not, and that is the front page of the newspaper rule or the front page of Google rule. You know, if, if Google were, you know, they put the Google doodle, if you go, put, look at Google, they'll, they'll put some funny doodle on the front page. If Google, instead of their Google doodle on the front page of Google one day said, my name's Tony Bell, if they said, Tony Bell did this, and they wrote the story of whatever my ethical dilemma was and how I handled it. Well, what would I want them to write? And generally, you're going to be headed in the right ethical direction. And if you would want, would not want them to write what you did, probably you're going in the wrong ethical direction. That's a very simple and prop, you know, any ethics prop that looks at this is gonna be grossed out. Probably that's way over simple, but I like that little rule of thumb uh, for behaving ethically and maybe that'll help serve you well in the future. Okay, we'll leave this video series here. We're gonna move on and in chapter two, we get into some more uh, cost concepts and you're gonna to have to pull out those calculators for chapter two. Uh, we do some number crunching. Take care and stay tuned for the next video.